Julius, good to see you again. Uh, I've got to ask, November, I mean, uh, how, how frustrating of an experience was that for you to be all geared up for this comeback and, and then not get to fight? Should I pick up the mic, Doc? <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, honestly, it wasn't frustrating, uh, as crazy as it would sound. Um, going over to Glory MMA and Fitness, being under James Krause, Grant Dawson, Austin Ford, and uh, Jason High, um, James does a really good job, an amazing job, for you to fall in love with the process. And if you guys saw me a year ago in January 2020, I was 255 pounds at the highest I've ever been, the biggest I've ever been. I had a, uh, like I had a phase where I was growing my hair out and eating food, and it didn't look good. But I didn't know that. I didn't recognize that. And then during the time, you know, I met up with James, and we started working. He was real strict with me, and he taught me to – not look at the result, look at the process of every day, the grind, the, the blue collar work environment. And when I got to that fight and they canceled it for the second time, I stepped on that scale, I was 186. I looked at my body, I looked like a Greek god. I looked super sexy. You could put me on any type of website and everybody would click to buy. I'd be an OnlyFans representative, let's go. And the thing is, is that <laughs> I just, I love that. So, like, even though it didn't happen, the process was there, and I knew I was going to get another fight. A new time was going to happen. It's not the end. I've been to the point where they almost told me it was the end of my career. So that was nothing but just a bump in the road. That's incredible. So I was curious because I thought maybe, you know, they would try to book you again quickly or you would push to, like, hey, give me something next week or, or whatever. So was that part of it that you were okay to step back and kind of go through a whole training camp again and go through that process again? Was was that okay with you to do all this again? Look, 31 months. My fight would be 31 months since my injury. 31 months since I'm able to train. So I was totally fine with the fact that I had to go back to the drawing boards and re-evaluate everything, re-sculpt my body, re-get my uh, technique better, just become an all-around athlete and understand you know, who I am and my own technique. Uh, it, it was great. It was awesome. We tried to rebook the fight with uh, Saparov, but he actually turned it down, even at a weight class above. So, you know, I'm not going to rush in and try to take a fight just because they take a fight. I'm making sure that it's the right one at the right time for me and my career. You mentioned, I mean, how long it's been. Of course, you know, new training camp and all that. So, what what are we to expect out of you on Saturday? I mean, is this a, are you are you a different fighter? I mean, is, have you reinvented yourself as a fighter, or is it just honing the techniques and the skills and the approach you already had? What, what should we expect to see out of you? You're going to see a mixed martial artist, as you saw from my first fight in the UFC. It was a, a wild one. If you got there, it was probably the best fight in 2017. They said the best first round. Uh, but that type of fight, you definitely you know only have a few. And then the next one, I even improved. Um, and this one, you're just going to see an evolution and someone that understands what he's doing in there and someone that's not just winging it. Does it feel like you're kind of starting over? Like you said, I mean, I think you had a little buzz behind you, a little momentum going, but it's, it's been a while. I mean, do you feel like you're, you're starting over or can you kind of pick up where you left off? Man, this is the thing. You guys may have forgotten about me, but when I step in that octagon, you all will remember what do you think about the matchup itself? Was it a name that you, that you liked or that you had been paying attention to? I mean, you know, he's kind of newer to the UFC. Yo, look, this is contenders versus contenders. This is season one versus season three or season two. I don't, I don't really recall. But it's, season one is the best contender series there is. Anybody want to argue that? Just look at the people that came out of it. I'm telling this right now. This right here is for all my season one vets. I'm representing them, and I'm going to let them know that we are the best contender series, number one. What's most important for you in this fight, Julian? Is it just about getting in there again and, and, and you know, getting comfortable in the octagon? Is it about you know, getting a win and getting that? Is it about a highlight reel, like going in and doing something that just gets that buzz around you again? I mean, what's, the, what's the most important thing here? Have fun. That's it. I don't need to worry about a knockout. I don't need to worry about um, the highlight reel. I don't need to worry about the fans and what they're going to say and all this stuff. I'm worried about having fun, going out there and doing what I love. 31 months, my friend, we sat there and looked on the sidelines while everyone sat there and got their hand raised, while everyone sat there and got paid, while everyone sat there and got, you know, recognition, while I sat there and drifted in the wind where no one remembered. And it's like 
I wanted that. And now that I'm here, it's like all that time that I was sad, all that time that just put a frown on my face, finally back. This is who I am. This is where I want to be. And I'm going to go out there and have as much fun as possible. And yes, getting punched in the face is so fun. <laughs> Last thing for me, what is, I mean, is there a lesson that you take out of everything that you've been through? I mean, like you said, it's been a heck of a journey in this, you know, past almost three years. Is there one particular lesson that you've taken out of it, whether it be for your professional career or, or for your life in general? Man, there's many lessons that came out of this injury. But one thing is that I learned, enjoy the process, man. Everything unravels, everything unfolds, everything happens the way it happens because it's how it should be. And that's one thing I really understand in this sport is that just let it go, let it flow, and everything will work out. Hey, man. You, you talk about letting it go and letting it flow and letting it all work out. Does that, do you think, give you a level of confidence inside you that puts you ahead of other people who, who almost want to rush everything and they, I have to get into from one camp to another and I have to get through this as quickly as possible? Do you think you have a level of confidence inside you that other people perhaps don't have because you're comfortable in just letting it go? Yeah, see, I believe in myself. I believe in my team. I believe in my coaches. And they are there with me the whole step of the way. We're flowing, we're going, and we're getting results. So... I, if I'm ahead of somebody, then so be it. But I'm not worried about them. And if I am ahead of them, that's trying to rush the game. Just enjoy the process, my friend. Is there a silver lining in training without being able to fight that you can improve on your skills without having to take time off from being banged up in a fight and stuff like that? Is there a silver lining in that you can just be working on yourself without having to focus on opponents? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, when you went to camp with James Krause. He sets a schedule. He sets times and books for you to read. And he pretty much develops you as a athlete, as a professional. And he makes sure that during this time that you're training for a fight or without a fight, you're improving inside and outside the octagon, whether it be financial advice, whether it be educational advice. So the thing is, if you only look at it like fighting, like what we all do, right? Where it's like, oh, fight, fight, fight. There's always end goals, and that's what he tries to get you to focus on the most. Is that a structure that you think works for everybody and people should try and uh, experience, or do you think it's a certain sort of fighter who perhaps can be blowing in the wind needs that sort of structure? I think it's if you want it. If that's the type of the mentality that you want, if that's the type of lifestyle that you want, then yeah, like if you want to go out there and chase money and, and gamble and put all your, your cards on black, go for it. But if you want to do it smart and intelligent, then that would probably be the best way to go through. Congratulations on looking sexy again. Thank you very much. Ooh, right here, beard is back. Best beard in the game. Julian, how, how difficult looking back was the actual process of, of getting injured and going through the surgeries and everything you had to go through? And, and it, it's kind of a rare injury for a fighter, right, to, that, that you went through. So how difficult was that whole process for you? I'm the one of one in the UFC to ever have the type of injury that I have sustained in July 6, 2018. Look, I missed weight. I lost a decision that I felt like I won. I lost money, and then I tore my arm out. That took me out for, as we're saying, 31 months. It was the toughest road that you could possibly be on, but I believed in myself. I went through everything and did everything that I could on the off camp to make sure I can come back as fast as possible, but it made me a better person. It made me who I am at this moment, talking to you guys on this stage. It made me smarter in the game, well-educated, and, it's just, it, it's not going to stop. But I don't ever want to go back to that moment. Did, did, was there a time that you thought this wouldn't happen? The doctor actually told me that I might have to find another career. Um, we have to choose a different career because the arm was not getting better. I couldn't lift my arm to pick up, you know, the cereal that I put on top of my refrigerator. I could, it just wouldn't go. Um, and it's what happens when you have adhesive capsulitis, a frozen shoulder. Like, it could take, it could thaw out, is what they would call it, in six months or six years or maybe never. And luckily, uh, after that day, you know, we did a, another surgery and everything. And after that, it ended up clicking. 
you know, and at the beginning of 2020, I was able to come back. What was like the the moment where you, where it kind of clicked and you said, "Oh, like my arm is going to work again." Like, what did that feel like for you? Man, have you ever walked around outside and you're sitting there and you forgot your wallet at home and you're like, "Damn, I would love some ice cream." And then you look down and you find 20 bucks. You know that feeling? That's what that shit no. feels like. That's what that no. feels like. But you'll figure it out. Exactly. It's hard to explain that feeling unless you've been there. Um, what, you know, you talked about the, the doctor at some point saying you might need to find something else to do. Like you've, you've found some creative outlets outside the cage. You know? Oh, yeah. So like, what, what, was that part of it? Was, were you like, oh, I might have to explore other things? And you, know, you found these other you know, ways to express yourself? Yeah, man, I, I just started being me. You know, everybody, like, we're always trying to be somebody else. Everybody wants to be Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor has that money. They want to talk like Conor McGregor. They want to sit there and, and talk trash like Conor McGregor. But it gets old when you try to mimic somebody you're not. And me, I'm a goofy, goofy guy. I'm funny. Well, at least I think I am. And that's all that matters <laughs> as long as I think I'm funny. And I'm exciting. So I started just doing funny stuff that I believed was hilarious that made me laugh at the end of the day and it ended up making connections with my podcast Beauty, Beauty and the Beast podcast with Kendra Lust an adult film star that many of you guys idolized growing up <laughs> and you know we talk about random stuff it also brought me into with sponsorships it also brought me in to doing the amazing you know famous Instagram post of the naked fighter which is hilarious and people think it's real but I'm going to continue doing it. But you've always been that guy, though. I mean, that, that has always, since you, since you started the UFC, the first time you know, I interviewed you, that, that's who you were. But was it just finding that you could express it publicly, that you could show people who you are? Because it's always been you. It's not like you just became this person. Yeah, man, it, it was just like, best way to explain it is fuck everybody. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's going to tell you, oh, you shouldn't do this. Oh, you should do this. Oh, you should do this. Don't do that. And it just gets to the point where it's like, who are you? Like, what have you done? You know, like, you're going to tell me to do this. You can give me advice, but you, you listen to everybody. You listen to the comments. You try to veer away from making people feel offended or making people feel um, some type of way. And it's got to the point where it's like, no matter what, if I sit here on stage with uh, an amazing t-shirt or a sweatshirt, someone's going to hate me for the clothes that I wear. So, like, I can't please everybody, and I'm not trying to go out there and please everybody. I'm here for me, I'm here for myself, and I'm here to make myself laugh and smile. W last thing for me is, what, what, do you, what do you think it's going to be like, you know, you talked about this journey, this process, Saturday night, you're walking out, what's it going to be like for you? Oh, man, what's it going to be like? It's going to be like walking out to Miley Cyrus, heart of glass, sitting there going the old school blondie. We're bringing it back, and I'm just going to be partying like I'm sitting there. It's like it's 1999, you know what I mean? Thanks, man.